I know a few good stories. They take place in a corner of America that might seem familiar, yet still manages to surprise. The settings are spectacular, the characters compelling, the action exciting, the plot lines unpredictable. I'm Tom Richardson. Join me as I explore New England's great outdoors, from Candlewood Lake, Connecticut to Caribou, Maine, from the beaches of Cape Cod to the peaks of New Hampshire's White Mountains. Stories are waiting. Let's live them on Explore New England. Explore New England is presented by your New England Ford dealers, your local REI co-op. REI believes a life outside is fundamental to a life well lived. Campers in RV and visitnewengland.com. Partial funding for this episode was provided by a joint promotional program grant through the New Hampshire Division of Travel and Tourism Development. Additional funding and support provided by the Hampton Area Chamber of Commerce and the Hampton Beach Village District. The town of Hampton, New Hampshire is best known for its beautiful beaches and lively social scenes. In the village of Hampton Beach, Ocean Boulevard bustles with summer vacationers enjoying the numerous restaurants, bars, casinos, and arcades, the air redolent with the smells of salt water and fried dough. Concerts and other performances are held at the Seashell Pavilion while the beach itself is the site of popular events such as the sand sculpture competition, the seafood festival, weekly fireworks, and the annual fire show. But there's more to Hampton than meets the eye. Dig a little deeper and you'll find outdoor activities to pursue and beautiful natural venues to explore. I did just that on a late summer visit that began with a surfing lesson with Dave Cropper, owner of Cinnamon Rainbow Surf Shop on North Beach. This Northeast surfing enclave is home to a dedicated cadre of hardcore surfers who pursue their passion in every season, routinely skipping work and other obligations to be in the water, even if that water is 35 degrees. So I grew up on the beach here in uh, Hampton, New Hampshire, and loved the water. Started borrowing some boards, used boards from people that surfed when I was a kid. 12, 13 years old, there weren't any surf shops at that time. There had been some in the 60s and the 70s. And then uh, in the early 80s, Cinnamon Rainbow is a satellite shop from Cape Cod, moved up to New Hampshire, and a couple other local surf shops opened up in the area. So the boom of the surfing was starting again. It was a dream come true, surf, you know, having a surf shop in your hometown, and it wasn't long before I was working at Cinnamon Rainbows. Shortly after high school, I took the surf shop over, and I've been on the beach doing it ever since. I think there's sometimes that you go out and there's only a few of your friends out and you're having these bonding experiences. I think sometimes you're out there and the surf can be big and challenging and your heart's racing a little bit. I think there's other times where it's just plain fun and you're laughing and having a great time uh, and sharing waves and watching your friends get waves. Um, every time you're out there, it's different. And a lot of it depends on the conditions. In surfing in New England, you get a lot of varying conditions. Sometimes the water can be 70 degrees in the summer. Other times it's 35 degrees. Sometimes, you know, you're, you're uh, shoveling out your truck to go surfing with a wetsuit on. It's amazing 
I've the, the community here, the surfing community, how it's grown over the years, and it's, it's a really special place to live and a special place to surf. I met Dave at his shop across the street from the beach and donned a wetsuit to protect me from the chilly waters. Although the current temps were nowhere near what local surfers endure in February. So Dave, man, what a day, but uh, the water's still kind of cold, right? So what, we, what kind of temperatures are we looking at? Uh, water temperatures are in the low 60s. It's a beautiful fall day, sunny skies with a light offshore breeze, small, fairly small surf, uh, clean conditions, but we'll get out there and give it a go. If you're too far forward, the nose will go under. If you're too far backwards, you're gonna be doing a wheelie. So what will happen is you want to um, paddle into a wave. When you feel the wave catches you, I like putting my hands here, arching your back and getting up as high as you can, and then in one motion, kind of go into your feet. All right, well, let's get out there. All right. Let's see if I can do it. I would say surfing, yes, it's a sport, but it's also a lifestyle. It's also something that when there's a good swell and the waves are good, I'm just as excited as I was as a kid. And that's pretty special. I always leave just feeling fortunate, like, wow, that was a beautiful morning, or what an amazing time I just had with my friends, or, you know, surfing with my daughter, or um, with friends and family, or meeting new people. Like, it's the, it's, there's so many experiences than, than just riding waves. After peeling off my wetsuit and drying off, I headed south to an appointment at Hampton Beach State Park, which many people don't realize comprises the entire length of Hampton Beach and several acres of land bordering the inlet to Hampton Harbor. I met Meredith Collins, the Seacoast Regional Supervisor with New Hampshire State Parks for a personal tour of the park, starting at the popular RV campground. So Meredith, how, how many sites do you have here? There are 28 uh, full hookup sites here on this side, and those have access to 50 amp power, water, and sewer. And then we have 18 campsites in our dry camping, our first come, first serve area, which don't have any hookups, and those are $30 a night. So where can you get firewood here? We sell firewood out of our campground office um, and ice as well. Okay. And, and we'll deliver that right out to people's campsites. So what's the state park store? Uh, we open in the summer months. We sell like apparel and just snacks and drinks, sodas, slushies and ice cream. This is our pavilion at South Beach. It's uh, $12.50 to rent um, and people rent it for weddings, uh, special events like the Hampton Chamber of Commerce has their beach and brew event down here with craft brewers. So all of this beach right here, that's all part of Hampton Beach State Park? Yes, it is, yep. What are you talking about, like two, three miles? Yeah, yeah, yeah two and a half-ish. Yeah, so yeah. a lot of, I bet a lot of people come here and, you know, they get, you know, they stay in a condo or, you know, one of the hotels downtown and they, they don't realize that, the, yeah, this is all part of the state park. It is, yep. Can people fish along the beach or what's, what's the deal with that? Uh, in the off season, people will fish from the beach, but when lifeguards are on duty and during the season, we don't allow fishing straight off the beach. You have to go over to the jetty side um, and fish into the harbor. I love horseback riding, skiing, spear fishing, hunting, all, all the outdoor activities. <laughs> uh, my dad had a Christmas tree farm, so where I grew up we had Christmas trees in the backyard and that, I don't know if that started it or what, but um, one of the things that I like about Hampton Beach is just the amount of events and free activities that are available for, for the public. That's really what people come here to be a part of and uh, makes it a really great place to come with a family and something for all ages. Given the length of Hampton Beach and the crowds it attracts each summer, the park requires a robust staff of lifeguards to ensure public safety. Running this program is Chief Lifeguard Patrick Murphy, who gave us a lift to the lifeguard headquarters on his UTV. So Pat, this is like command central for the lifeguards? 
Yeah, this is our lifeguard operations. It's basically the brain of everything. So we have our base radio that all communication comes through. We have our computers that set up to make sure we're keeping accurate like data. We have ways to get out to like the fire department, police department all around the state. And it's a great lookout spot as well. You can see everything, the entire beach. It's just an outstanding spot to have our dispatcher here. Life saving, lifeguarding yes. has come a long ways since, since 50 years ago, right? Yeah, even in the last 10, 15 years, it just keeps evolving. Mm -hmm. We want to be able to have interoperability with all types of agencies. We want to work together to keep New Hampshire Seacoast as safe as possible. And how many lifeguards do you have on staff during the summertime? So during the summer, we have 75 ocean lifeguards that cover from Hampton Beach up to Wallace Sands. I'm sorry. You guys collect Matchbox cars or what? What's going on? The cars are great, but we have a lot of other things as well. Oh yeah, um, I, did, I missed all the dinosaurs. There are dogs, there's people up here. Our lifeguards, if they find a toy in the sand, they bring it in. And we're at the point where we're running out of room, where we have them. We legit, in our closet back here, we have two boxes filled. So bad. come over here and explain this. Uh, we have an event at the beginning of every summer. The Village District puts it on. It's this master sand sculpture thing. And last year, they did a sand sculpture of myself on a four-wheeler so at the end of it we chopped the head off and now it's up here <laughs> so we're part of the usla so it's the united states life saving association so we have the ability to train our own lifeguards we certify our own lifeguards every day we train rain or shine we are training we're out there from 8 45 to 10 making sure we're getting better and what day. kind of training like daily training do you guys do it changes every day so one day it might be a run swim run, one day it might be a two mile swim. In the 19 years I've been here, it's changed. So when I first started, it's, you're, you're a lifeguard. You get to do all, you get to make rescues, you're helping people and all this stuff. And that's still great, but as I've gotten older and moved up in the operation, it's training the new lifeguards, seeing them go out and save someone's life. And they make a rescue for the first time and they're so happy because they just saved someone's life. It's a new experience. And just keeping the program moving forward. We want the lifeguards to be the best in the country. We want to just keep being the best that we can be. And that motivates me now. And how do you, how do you get your lifeguards to stay like focused for such long periods of time. I mean, there's a lot of distractions, kids running all over the place. It's what we do, like it's part of our operation and you have to be focused because as you said, there could be all stuff going on, 150,000 people on this beach on a busy day. And if you miss one thing, that's one too many because it, all it takes is one person. Mm -hmm. And that one person, when they need our help, we have to be there. The name Gorin is synonymous with Hampton sport fishing, as the Gorin family has been running fishing charters out of Hampton Harbor since the 1930s. Partly due to fluctuations in the local groundfish fisheries and the rise in ecocentric tourism, they eventually expanded the business to include whale watching trips. However, fishing will always remain part of the Gorin DNA. So our grandparents, Al and Alice Gorin, they started Algarin Deep Sea Fishing 70 plus years ago. My grandfather, Al, had a little rowboat and took people out into the, into the harbor, crab fishing from there, bigger boats, bigger boats, but then something wonderful happened. They had four sons. <laughs> and that's four deckhands. <laughs> right out, right four, out the gate. Yeah. Four strong males, for sure. Uh, that definitely loved fishing and taking people fishing. So with that, four sons produced four boats, which turned into five boats, very large boats, taking hundreds of thousands of people fishing every summer. Then their sons took over, and now our sons are in play. Yes, my son is 18, he just got his captain's license, so we're very excited. But you, but you guys like the fish too. I mean, oh, tell, tell yeah. me about my mother would get rid of us every day and send us out with my dad. Would sit, we couldn't even see over the rail, and they would sit us on these bait buckets and we would fish all day, driving everybody crazy. 
From there, it, it's not, this isn't even a job, it's just, it's a lifestyle. Our children, it's in the blood. It's, it, it's really, that's what they do every day. So, you know, recently what's happened is uh, they've put a lot of restrictions on the fishing. Uh, they're saying every, everything's overfished. So we had to be a little creative with that as well. Six years ago, they said, we're not gonna allow you to keep any more codfish. We didn't believe that, you know? And all of a sudden we couldn't keep any codfish for a long time, for years. So we had to be creative. We did whale watching, pirate cruises, yes. island sunset cruises, firework cruises, to, you know, to, to try to keep the people coming in. The fish used to be huge codfish coming in, 70, 80 pounds daily, and that wouldn't even be the biggest one. Now we're lucky if we can get a, a 15 to 20 pound codfish. You're always gonna have the hardcore fishermen that are here at 3 a.m. every morning. And they, it goes down the generations, just like we do. We'll see, see the same people, grandfather, father, son. And we love children, kids who fish. We're, we're a family business through and through, yes. top to bottom. The Gorans currently operate two large vessels and several smaller charter boats out of Hampton Harbor and also offer trips aboard Captain Derek Goran's 65-foot all-in. I joined Derek and his crew for a half-day bottom fishing trip that took us some 12 miles offshore in blustery conditions. We're going around halfway hump. It's kind of the only spot we can get to on this half-day bottom trip that we do well at. We've been doing well here for the last six, seven years as the haddock have come back. So we're going out to halfway. It's about 12 miles from Hampton. And uh, we're fishing between 180 and 300 feet. You got, you got some fish right over here. Oh boy. <laughs> oh boy, here. This is a whiting. King whiting. They're very sharp teeth. Like needles. Oh. Excellent right. tuna baits. Party boat fishing can be somewhat chaotic, as the large number of fishing lines in the water inevitably results in tangles. Add the challenge of trying to teach novice anglers how to fish in sometimes heavy seas in 200 plus feet of water, and you wonder how the deckhands manage to maintain their sanity. What do we got? Somebody stuck? Somebody stuck on me, yeah. yeah. You're stuck on the bottom, so you caught a rock. Why? This is what happens when you let the line out with tension and don't hold your thumb on it. Yeah. No matter how many times you tell people. Line. That, right that backlash there. right there is why people who run party boats usually drink. <laughs> yeah, the award. All right, guys, we're about to get set up here. Those of you who know how to do this, you can go ahead and drop your lines. I've been fishing on boats since before I can remember. I grew up into this. I knew I was going to be this. What I love most about it is the freedom. I like people, but I like the ocean better. Your basic deep sea fishing rod, open face reel, about seven feet long, sturdy, rigid tip. Your basic ground fish setup that we use for haddock and codfish one pound sinker, gets you all the way to the bottom, two hooks, one up high, one down low. The haddock, the cod, the pollock, the ground fish, what we use primarily for those is squid. We cut them into little pieces, one piece for each hook, and there you go, ready to rock. Wait for the tip to bounce, set the hook, crank the fish in, and what I like to do is push the line back and forth so you get a nice level spool, and when next time you drop the line, it won't get a mess, it won't get entangled knots. We get a lot of people who don't come out here, and it's their first time ever doing this, and you teach them how to, teach them how to catch the fish, and the reward, they, the happiness they get from catching a fish and being able to take it home instead of buying it at a store and eating their own dinner is something they harvested. It, it makes me happy at the end of the day.
while party boat anglers and whale watchers head offshore to find their quarry in the ocean waters east of Hampton, others choose to explore the inner harbor and the maze of tidal creeks that wind deep into the salt marsh system behind Hampton Beach. On a calm evening, I joined Craig Schreck, the owner of Hampton Beach Parasail and Paddleboard, on an exploration of this part of Hampton that few visitors even know exists. Cool spot you got yeah. here. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> yeah, well, come on down. We'll do some uh, paddle boarding through the marshes. So are these, what, you, do you get these boards every year, brand new or something? Yeah, I usually get a couple brand new ones every year. Usually we go through a couple paddles every year. So. Why, because people lose them? <laughs> lose them, float away, forget them. <laughs> and, and, and they're super light. Yeah, which just, is great. And uh, it's got like grippy, Grippy yep, sort of yep, texture yep. there. We do give you like the life jackets, so kind of keep the life jackets on there. Some people can put a cooler under here. Do you have guys that people that fish on these? Yep, I do have some people that go out and fish, fish on them. I'm always worried that they catch a big one where they might end up, but <laughs> hey, well, <laughs> get dragged that's... around. Now, do you um, like to use, uh, 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 recommend barefoot, right? Or... Yeah, I usually recommend barefoot, um, just because it's a, you know, you get a better feel, you don't get things wet. Um, and also, if you want to jump in the water and relax for a little bit, it's just a little nicer. All right, well, barefoot it is then, my friend. So here's our, our strap or leash, and uh, put it right around your ankle. Um, this is a really good thing to have a safety along with the life jacket. So what we usually tell people who haven't done it is uh, get going. You can either start off on your stomach till you get your balance and on your knees. You paddle for a little bit. And then as you get a little momentum, just, just kind of let it, it'll keep going. One foot up, put your other foot up, and stand, stand right up and keep going. When planning a paddleboard trip on Hampton Harbor, it's important to factor in the tides and wind. The former can create considerable current, which can make for tough sledding if you have to paddle against it. Strong winds can be even more challenging, especially in open water, and Craig doesn't recommend trips in winds above 10 knots, especially for novice paddlers. Um, working with tourists, it's always a great thing when you have people come down and it's a highlight of their vacation and they don't realize that anybody can do this, whether it's paddle boarding, parasailing, um, it's easy, it's fun, it's something different and a great experience to see uh, the New Hampshire seacoast. So this is the uh, Hampton Marsh. Uh, it's about 5,000 acres. It's one of the largest saltwater marshes in New Hampshire. And it's really uh, you know, critical to our ecosystem. The sprawling salt marsh behind Hampton Beach is part of the 5,000 acre Hampton Seabrook estuary system which represents the second largest estuary on the New Hampshire seacoast. Together, the estuary and marsh play a critical role as a nursery for juvenile fish and shellfish, as well as a home for seasonal breeding birds and numerous migratory species. And you can bet that the marsh channels also hold some sizable striped bass from May to October. Additionally, the marsh filters pollutants from water flowing into the system from upstream areas and protects against storm-related flooding and erosion. So, while Hampton Beach parties, the marsh quietly goes about its business. You really need to get up in it, like we're doing right now, to really appreciate it. And it's so peaceful back here. Oh yeah. You know, and the marsh grass is starting to turn, or that, you know, that fall color. We get a lot of people that come paddle boarding and really don't know what to expect and don't realize how much of the harbor is here. They think they're gonna go out in the ocean and. Um, they don't realize the boats back here, the estuary, the birds, um, all the fish and everything that's really going on uh, back here. And then they see it and it's just really eye-opening. Another good spot to launch a canoe, kayak or paddleboard, especially for those wishing to access the upper estuary, is the dirt pull-off on Route 101 on the way to Hampton Beach. From here, you can paddle under the bridge and work your way deeper into the maze of marsh creeks or head downstream toward the harbor. Either way, you're sure to encounter plenty of bird life, while gaining a new perspective on this New Hampshire seacoast destination with two wild sides. <laughs>